Vietnam. The change in the district chief happened at approximately the same time that the U.S. Navy was changing its strategy in what became sea lords. Southeast Asia, uh, land, air, river, and lakes. The Navy had patrol areas along the South China Sea and up in the mouths of each of these rivers. Those Navy patrol boats were called swift boats, PCF patrol craft fast, and they always had radio communication with the district advisor team. My assignment down there at the time I arrived was as deputy district advisor. There was a senior advisor, but there were some problems between him and the district chief, and he was soon relieved of his command and moved up to province headquarters. A new senior advisor did come in, but he only stayed there about a month, and he had to go home on emergency leave. And that coincided with about the time we got the new district chief. He, the senior advisor, left about two weeks, three weeks after we changed district chiefs and was gone for a month. So the new district chief was basically working with me in the role of senior advisor, which goes back to some of the experience that I'd had in uh, Germany with the 24th Infantry, the battalion experience and also being in charge of the company command. <clears throat> when we started with the new district chief, he came from North Vietnam. When the petition took place and they separated, he didn't get to come south. He was held for 18 months as a prisoner of the North Vietnam. Needless to say, he had no love loss with the communists. So when he came in, he was in charge of this area that we were supposed to be securing. He came over to the advisor hooch and was asking us, you know, how things were, what was going on. And we showed him a briefing that we had outpost here, along here, along here, back up over in here, and we pretty much controlled this area back here. But from this area back this way, we had no control. It was BC, they could do basically whatever they wanted to, except for what the Navy was doing with interdiction and, and uh, uh, air support that we got. The other additional asset that the Navy provided us was a destroyer or a destroyer escort that was sitting back off out here in the South China Sea. And I still to this day remember the call sign at Mission 7. 26 Delta, fire mission, fire mission. This is 80 over. <laughs> They're pretty good when they fire those five inch guns in there. It will make Charlie think he doesn't want to be there. So, our mission was to take back what we could. And with the new district chief, he began training and he began showing some leadership and demanding some uh, discipline from the troops that we had. We had a very good PF platoon leader. And let me tell you a little bit about the company and the PFs. The RF company, Regional Force Company, is a lightly armed infantry walking unit. In our American system, you would relate it to a National Guard type outfit a low priority, poorly equipped, and not very well trained. So we had a National Guard type reach force. Our PFs were from the local hamlets that they were uh, recruiting from. Some of them were from some other areas and we did and could move them around. Mostly they were the local boys that came out of their local area. They knew everything down there. I like to call those PF guys Poplar Force Platoons. That was like my Texas Sheriff's Posse. They just rounded up some guys and we went after the bad guys. And they were pretty good at it when we equipped them 
and when we gave them a mission, and when we had some leadership. So that was the basic of what was going on in Tom Foot. When I got there, there's about seven areas in here, villages. Uh, we had one in a contested area where the VC controlled it at night. We had some people in there in the day, but we couldn't prevent the VC from coming in and taxing the people and disrupting commerce. All the rest of it was VC area in a base area. The swift boats, sailors called our area the top food secret zone. And the swifts were out of Cat Low, Coastal Division 13 is the ones that I was working with. We were on the river one time, and as I told you a minute ago, we just began having sea lords. Before sea lords came in, I would get these patrol officers to take us, meet us at the docks here in the different outposts, depending on which river we were on, and take us down the Illinois Canal around on the Bakun Canal because these are areas that we could not get to. There are no roads in Tom Foot that were tra traveling that we could travel to the east. The only road that had any uh, travel was from Tom Foot to Hung Me in the district to the west. We wanted to go east to see what was down there. So the Swifts took us down there. We had air from the Army, the bird dog, Army bird dogs, and we would fly observation missions. But as we got familiar with the Swifts and Sea Lords came around, I asked the uh, uh, tactical commander one day, say, hey, you reckon y'all could haul our troops if we can organize uh, sweep and start in in one area and sweep the area and have you come up and pick us up at a rod food point. He said, yeah, we could probably do that. I'll have to check with the skipper up there who uh, was at Cat Lowe. So they went on back off patrol. About a day or so, we got the call back. Hey, eight zero, where do you want to go? When do you want us? What do you want us to do? When, when can we meet you? That was the beginning of a tremendously effective joint operation between the Vietnamese Regional and Popper Forces, the advisors that were with them, and the United States Navy Swift Boats. That decision to where you want us, when you want us, and where we're going started the demise and the defeat, and I say the word defeat, because we defeated the VC in five of these seven villages before I left in July 1969. This was all taking place in 1968 in about uh, the end of November, first part of December.